that a patient had a better than 50% chance of any improvement when he was treated by his doctors. One of the great medical discoveries of the near future will be a method of suspended animation so that a man can sleep away down the centuries and in this manner travel into the future. Now this technique, which may possibly be based on deep freezing, will one day be used to send into the future people suffering from diseases or ailments beyond the ability of present day medical science to cure. Though I don't really know how one will calculate the health insurance contributions to pay for medical treatment 500 years hence. Another use of suspended animation will be for the long range exploration of space. In this way, us short lived creatures will be able to travel enormous distances, although we may not, of course, be so short lived in the future because even immortality may be on the cards one day. However, even without immortality, we may be able to make journeys lasting thousands of years and such journeys will be necessary if we ever wish to cross the enormous gulfs which separate from us from the stars. Distance is so great that even light, traveling at 600 million miles every hour, takes years to cross them. But why should we attempt these immense voyages? Well, because it seems fairly certain that, at least at this moment in time, there are no other intelligent creatures in our own solar system. We'll have to go out to the stars to, to meet them. For certainly out there among the 100,000 million other suns of our universe, there must be many civilizations, perhaps far higher than our own. The first contact with intelligent extraterrestrials will be the greatest adventure in the future of man. It may not happen for centuries, but one day it will come. Meanwhile, near at home, there's plenty to do in this solar system on the moon and planets. Today, we can just reach the moon. Tomorrow, men will be living there. A hundred years from now, some men will call it home. At the moment, it's a very unattractive kind of place to imagine as a home, and this is true of all the planets. There's not one on which unprotected men could live or on which any form of life as we know it could exist, with the possible exception of Mars. However, a hundred years from now, things will be very different. With the techniques which we are now acquiring, it will one day be possible to modify the environments on at least some of the planets so that men can live there without spacesuits or airtight cities. The technique for this has been called planetary engineering, and one astronomer has coined the very optimistic phrase, the reconstruction of the solar system. Looking as far into the technological future as I dare, I'd like to describe the invention to end all inventions. I call it the replicator, and it's simply a duplicating machine. But it's a duplicating machine that can make an exact copy of anything. Now, we're already familiar with perfect copies of printing, of pictures, and of sounds. Yet, the camera and the tape recorder would have seemed miraculous to our ancestors. And uh, to a medieval monk, who perhaps in his whole life only saw a few dozen books, each one patiently copied by hand, our present world, in which literally millions of books exist, would again have seemed absolutely inconceivable. Can we imagine a world in which objects can be made as easily as today we can make books? Well, don't ask me exactly how the replicator would work. If I knew, I'd patent it at once. Confronted with such a device, our present society would probably sink into a kind of gluttonous barbarism because everybody would want unlimited quantities of everything since nothing would cost anything. In fact, cynics may doubt if any human society could survive an invention which would lead to unlimited abundance and the final ending of the curse of Adam. And yet, you know, human beings are almost infinitely adaptable. Look at the incredible changes we've experienced and survived from the Stone Age to the present time. And yet even greater changes are still to come. Because the future is not merely 
an extension of the present with bigger and better machines and cities and gadgets. It will be fundamentally different. And many of the things we take for granted will one day pass away as completely as oh, spinning wheels and sedan chairs and oil lamps. And that is why the future is so endlessly fascinating. Because try as we can, we'll never outguess it. Thank you.